me just check with him, uh -oh. okay? No. With who? Hi, uh -oh. Blaine. It's producer oh, no. guy. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, no, we can shoot something in the jungle soon. Listen, I was uh, the jungle again. Hey guys, my name's Dan. Today I'm reacting to the Shazam Fury of the Gods pitch meeting. Just got home from watching this movie. Still have my bag of popcorn. You know it's a bag of popcorn because it has popcorn right on the bag there. Very excited to uh, talk about this movie. Uh, hopefully not too long because I'm kind of just going to address the things I like, things I didn't like. Maybe expand on some of the things that Ryan talks about. And I'm very curious to see what exactly he has to say about this one. But before we get into it though, I do have a few plugs to get out of the way. First of all, all of these links here. First off, the patreon.com slash Reactor is the best place to support me while getting some fun goodies. Then you have my socials. It's the one place to see whenever I post anything when you're not on YouTube. And lastly, the channel Discord is the absolute best way to get in contact with me while also seeing this week's reaction schedule. Then go on over and support the Pitch Meeting channel and Ryan George's channel as well. He's the one that puts these all together. I'll leave the links for both of those channels down in the description. And lastly, I am on the road to 8,000 subscribers getting very close. So every little bit of support helps at this point. So if you like this reaction at any point in time, you like Shazam, you like Ryan George, you like these pitch meetings, please go right below this video, click that like button, the subscribe button, and ring the notification bell. And without any further ado, let's go. So you have that Shazam sequel for me? Yep. Yes, sir, I do. And I was thinking we have Shazam go up against Black Adam in this one. You know, his main nemesis uh -oh. from the comics. Oh, uh -oh. I absolutely love that idea. Let me just check with him, uh -oh. okay? No. With who? Hi, uh -oh. Blaine. It's producer oh, no. guy. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, no, we can shoot something in the jungle soon. Listen, I was uh, the to jungle Shazam again. too. We could have him maybe go up against Black Adam. What do you think? Is it is this uh -oh. not your decision? Great. Oh, no. oh that sounds fantastic. Okay, oh, no. thank you. Yeah, Here so comes. that's not that's not gonna happen. Uh. But, uh, he wants Black Adam to fight Superman. He doesn't want Black Adam to have anything to do with Shazam. But he, but he, but he, you know, he definitely does though. Yeah, but yeah, see, he there's does. Been a change in the hierarchy of power in the DCEU. Sure he, has. I keep hearing that. What is I don't. What does that mean? It means I'm terrified of Dwayne Johnson. Oh my God, <laughs> he's a That's powerful fair. man and he's huge. He that, is. I mean, yeah, he is. So yeah. yeah, you got any other ideas for me? I, I guess I can figure something else out. Please do. Please do. Okay. All right. Some time later. So you have a new Shazam movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. So Shazam is gonna go up against the Daughters of Atlas. Are they played by Dwayne the Rock Johnson? They're not. No. Oh, thank God. Okay. So great. Tell me about this thing. <laughs> well, these two Daughters of Atlas, they steal the wizard staff. You know the wizard from the first movie? How come? They need it for evil stuff. Uh oh. And what's going on with Billy Batson? Oh, well, all the kids are a couple years older now, so Billy's kind of afraid he's gonna get kicked out of the foster home when he turns 18. Oh, so he's like a little bit older, a little bit more mature. As Billy, yeah, as Shazam, he's somehow gonna act even more childish than the first movie. Wasn't that one of the main criticisms of the first movie, mm -hmm. how Billy Batson didn't really feel like the same person as Shazam? Yep, yes. So we're not gonna fix it. No. Okay. What we will do is give the kid version a lot less screen time this time around. I guess that's something. Okay, sure. So anyway, Freddy meets this new girl at school and they fall in love pretty much instantly. Oh, how come? Because that's what I, I wrote that down. Yeah, right you wrote here. that down, oh, huh? Gotcha. You yeah, see, he does something kind of brave and so she's like, oh, I am in to this child. What? Oh, well, she's actually a 6,000-year-old Yeah, that's a little guy. weird, isn't He's, it? you know, a minor, so it's pretty romantic. That's not, that no, doesn't that's, seem okay oh, at no, all. No, well, it's see, not. acknowledge that it's kind of creepy, and that makes it not creepy and okay. Oh, Is that oh, how that works? Oh, so you acknowledge it, and that makes everything okay. That's totally not how that works. It might be, yeah. So anyway, she has these crazy powers where she can like move and rearrange buildings and stuff. What happens to the people inside those buildings? Unclear. And so we're gonna find out she's actually the third daughter of Atlas. Uh oh. Yeah, but she's good now because she fell in love with the child. Yeah, uh, totally. Her two sisters they take away Freddy's powers and kidnap him. Oh no. So now Shazam and the family need to go rescue him. Yeah. And they... also kill one of his teachers in the process. Do. So they go do that, but then one of the daughters of Atlas lets herself get captured on purpose. Oh, uh, getting captured on purpose is tight, I guess. What's no. her safe word? What? What? Anyway, what? So she huh? let herself get captured because she wanted to get close to this apple that yep. she needed. Couldn't have just gone to the grocery store? Well, this is a special apple that's like the seed for the tree of life. Oh, yeah, that's probably not affordable at the grocery store. What with no, inflation? So they want to plant this seed in their realm to bring it back to life because their realm is dead and stuff. Okay. But one of the daughters, Calypso, is like, actually, let's plant it on Earth so we can conquer it because I'm very evil. Very evil. Very so she evil. she does that and a bunch of monsters pop out and start attacking everybody. Oh no. Yeah, so the third act of the movie is gonna be chaos in the streets of the city. Oh wow wow wow. 
Wow. So the good guys are gonna have to run around and try to save the day. Amazing. By the way, if we can incorporate Skittles somehow, they've expressed oh, some interest God. in product placement. Oh, yeah, not uh. a problem at all. I could have the characters run past the building that has, like, a Skittles poster on it or something. No, yeah. there's more. You don't like it? It's just more. the more in your face the there's product more. placement, the more money they're gonna give us. I could have the characters oh. say that Skittles are the closest thing that humans have to the nectar of the gods and then use some Skittles to become friends with unicorns and ride the unicorns while shouting, Taste the Rainbow. Yeah. We are going to be so rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that much is money. blatant. I love it. Anyway, so then Shazam's going to end up saving the day. How does he manage that? Well, he freaking, he believes in himself. That'll do it. So he actually yep. sacrifices himself and dies. Oh, my God. Yeah. Fatally. Man, well, it's going to be tough to have a happy ending with a dead protagonist. Wait for it, though. Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, because see, the Shazam family buries his dead body, but then Wonder Woman shows up. I Okay. And she's going to reanimate his lifeless corpse, which is a thing she can do now. Oh. Well, great. Yeah, With that so, staff. You know, that worked out well. I'm going to spoil that in the trailer. So where was she this whole time? Busy. And how'd she find out about what happened or know who Billy is? They shut up until then we're all done. <laughs> what do you think? Well, it sounds like a lot of fun and people loved the first movie, so I don't see how this could do badly. Great. Unless we kind of... You know, announce that the whole DCEU is going to be kind of restructured and this movie doesn't really matter. Why no. You... No, that's that. That was awful. And the whole situation with The Rock was kind of terrible. I don't know what possessed him to do that. Kind of made this whole thing happen. All right, so taking this bit aside, taking everything with The Rock aside, taking a look at, uh, at this movie as a whole, I thought it was okay. It, uh, it, there are certainly worse superheroes, uh, superhero movies out there. I thought it, it kept like the same sort of theme, the same sort of family theme from the original. Um, there were uh, some funny moments, some very uh, not not very laugh out loud, but just some things that made me chuckle throughout the movie. Um, I I wasn't really too keen on that side story, that sub that that li love story. That subplot love story. That's it. <laughs> Those are the words I meant to say. The whole subplot love story with, with Freddy and one of the sisters. And, like, when they were on that building or whatever, when they captured him for the uh, for the first time or whatever. Well, the only time. Uh, the one of, His favorite teacher, the one who stood up for him, was just, like, let off to die. The other sister did nothing and lied almost immediately to this child to where like he was just like oh like i i hate you now but then like immediately just gets flipped to the very moment where he's no longer being captive like oh we put you i put you i help put you in this place now i'm just gonna let you go yeah yeah just just, just go on right ahead fall back in love with me for some reason even though i lied to your face and was part of killing your favorite teacher no but everything else is just perfectly fine i Outside of that, I didn't really care about that at all because they have so many different characters uh, throughout this movie and you only really focused on that. And then, of course, you had uh, the, the Skittles brand integration that felt so forced, so freaking cringy. Like, as soon as she said, taste the rainbow, she said it twice, by the way. She said, taste the rainbow. It, it felt really forced. It felt so out of left field. Like, nobody would say that nobody really talks that way and then they're on like these unicorns that you know need to feed on these skittles to really i, I guess survive i guess that, that was the thing and then she said it again but she had the mf -er at the end of it and i she's basically a kid saying taste the rainbow mother effer it, it it just it just didn't work it didn't hit because it was supposed to be like this big moment or whatever it's like oh cool she said that thing moment but like in the movie theater i was in i was silent everyone else in there was silent so i'm not really sure who that line was really for but it didn't really feel uh great uh the fight scene seemed fine uh i thought it was weird how like again because ant-man kind of had like the same sort of problem outside of you know with this whole movie being irrelevant anyway the fact that there's nothing really lost here right that the, the, there was no real lesson that was uh, that was learned there there was just nothing you just have adding another member to this group of people more characters to get to know because you only really got to know uh, you already knew billy from the first one and we met 
uh, Freddy in this one where they really, really focused on him a lot and not enough of Shazam for me. It just makes it for an okay movie that I guess I'm going to have to forget now because they're resetting everything. And they even had like the um, uh, the two end credits scene, which again felt like they were useless because it didn't really mean anything. There was no mention of Black Adam at all. No mention of Superman at all, which is weird because of how much Bailey Batson looks up to Superman. And it's, it's just the whole DCEU thing is a complete mess right now. I hope they fix it at some point. I hope The Rock decides, like, oh, the whole plot thing is not going to work for me, brother. Like, how hopefully... Uh, he gets his head on straight as far as that goes. Realize what exactly is going on uh, within uh, the DCEU. Like within like the whole lore of uh, Black Adam being the primary villain for Shazam. Have that happen. And then you can go on into the Superman stuff. Maybe the three of them like fight each other or whatever. I think that could be fun. But who really knows what their plan is at this point. So that's going to do it for me here. Comment down below. Let me know what did you think about Shazam for Yuri of the Gods. Please leave a like before you go. And lastly, once again, please do check out all these links. More specifically, the Patreon. I want to give you shout-outs like these. Luchador Cruising, Wolverine 310, Jordan Burr, Lauren Davenport, Kester Cronage, Amber K, Raymond Bright, Chris Curtis, Jeremiah McCarroll, and Jose Acevedo. Don't forget to click that subscribe button before you go. And I'll see you guys next time.